edition of Path TV. I am your co-host, Michael Stern, along with my co-host, Avnas Kunda. Hello. And uh, we wanted to talk today about XML sitemaps. Mm -hmm. What are they? What are they for? Who cares? Who cares? The surgeon didn't scare. What are XML sitemaps? Uh, they're nothing but an index to your website. Uh, who looks at them is search engines do. So if you have like a hundred pages, you want the search engines to index all of those pages. You create a sitemap, tell the search engines that this is the index to my website. So that's the definition of it. Right. So, it, so if you go to uh, sitemap, sitemaps.org or sitemap.org? I don't want to figure out which one. Um, there's a specification there that defines what should be in the uh, in the in the sitemap. And a sitemap is simply a, uh, a a plain text file that sits on your on your server that gives Google or Bing or Yahoo or whoever whatever search engine um, a list of all of the pages that exist in your website. So. If there is no list like it, an explicit list like this, there would be um, Google would have to organically sort of crawl around your website and, and hopefully find every single page that's on your site. Um, giving Google a an XML sitemap directly helps them to know exactly what you want to be indexed um, quicker and uh, more efficiently than if they were just crawling around for themselves. Yeah, and. There's actually a few limitations for uh, the sitemap that you can only give in 500 URLs, um, uh, 50,000 URLs per sitemap. So what happened? I mean, there's a size limit. It's 10 MB. So you can't go over 10 MB per sitemap. So what about these huge sites with like millions of pages, Amazon and all? So they actually have sitemap, something called a sitemap index, which is an index for the sitemaps. So you have, for suppose, products in 10 different categories. You have a million products in each category. You make different sitemaps for all of the products, segregate them, a good naming convention, and put all of that in the sitemap index, saying sitemap 1 is this, sitemap 2 is this, and sitemap 3 is this. So basically, you can have a sitemap index, which then points to a sitemap, which then points to your URLs. Now because we have that 10 MB limit, each sitemap index can index around 2.5 billion URLs, which is really huge. Oh, it's 10, it's 10 megabytes per site per sitemap? And a sitemap or total? In, no, 10 megabytes per sitemap. So a sitemap index is again a sitemap, oh. which again accommodates 10, 10 megabytes. megabytes. Yeah. 10 so megabytes. basically, 10 megabytes of 50,000 pointing to another 50,000 pointing to thousands of other sitemaps, or up to 50,000 other sitemaps. Yeah. So 50,000 into 50,000 gives you 2.5 billion. So that's the limit you can get. So that's the total addressable. Yeah, well, that's just one space for all sitemaps for a domain or for all URLs of a domain. Yeah. So I guess the search engines will only search, uh, index 2.5 billion. No, the search engines will actually index more because right. you can, give you can only tell, give them 2.5 billion. Per sitemap index. So you but can, you can only have one level of sitemap index, right? Well, we can have two more than that. Oh, that's a lot. So if you have more than 2.5 billion pages on your site, um, you should be watching more advanced videos. <laughs> so, um, but, but that is a start as to, you know, what a sitemap is for and, and why you can go through the trouble. It's really to get Google and Bing more aware of all the pages on your site without having them to, or having them organically crawl and try to find their way around your site for every page. Yeah, that's about it. And Avinash with his brand new sign off. Don't you have a sign off? I don't have one. I can do Ruben sign off. Do Ruben sign off. Uh, thank you for watching. 
wherever you're watching, whether it's in good morning, good evening, good night. <laughs> Thank you.